see all of you in the Lord's house. You that are visiting, we thank the Lord for you. We're glad you're with us today. And I want to begin with an opening scripture, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. And this is Jesus speaking. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Aren't you glad he's still knocking? Amen. He said, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him and sup with him and he with me. Still given the great invitation this morning, isn't he? And if you're here and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you come to the right place today. Listen, we Amen. pray this will be the day of your salvation. Amen. God bless you. Glad you're with us. Have prayer with me. Our Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name. Lord, we just pray you bless our worship this morning. Lord, we come here to honor you and bring you glory. And we're thankful for our church family. We're thankful for those who may be visiting today. Lord, just bless our worship. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus. Now, have your way in this service. Bless the singing, the congregationals, the specials. Bless the word of God. Yes. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What are you singing, James? If you'd like to use the hymn, though, page 656. <laughs> This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, oh. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. All right, got a few announcements for you uh, this morning. Easter cantata practice is at 4:30. Uh, 
uh, this afternoon. And while we're getting closer, hey, two weeks from today, Easter Cantata, and we're looking so forward to that as being part of our Easter morning celebration, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, men and ladies prayer, 545 this evening, 6 o'clock worship. Uh, I'll be preaching this evening. We do have a trustee meeting right after the service uh, tonight. <coughs> Wednesday worship, 7 o'clock. Brother Rich is up this Wednesday evening. And then Saturday, this Saturday, is the annual Easter egg hunt. And uh, so round up all the kids and the grandkids and the neighbor kids, and it ought to be a real good time uh, for our Easter egg hunt this Saturday. That's from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. So sure hope we have good good day of weather uh, for that. Good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. And we're sure glad you've joined us today. God bless you. Brother James. All right, we're going to recognize our birthdays and anniversaries this morning first. And uh, I know we have one back here, <laughs> Sister Patricia. Happy birthday. Today is the day, right? Happy birthday. Anybody else have any birthdays today or this week? Nobody? How about anniversaries? Oh, you get to get all the singing today. All right, let's sing happy birthday to Sister Patricia. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, may the Lord bless and keep you, happy birthday to you. You going to tell us how many, Robert? Where'd Robert go? Oh, you better, you better not, Robert, I'm just kidding. Okay, when the roll is called up yonder, 702. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, up yonder I'll be there all right page 317 will be the last one <clears throat> victory in Jesus I heard an old old story how a savior came from glory how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning then I repented of my sins and won the victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He 
plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. It's time for our morning offering. We may give to the Lord as we love him today. If our fellows had come, and while they're coming, let me just say this to our ladies. Ladies, thank you so much uh, for the meal you provided and served yesterday. That was amazing to have such a huge crowd. And y'all did that so well. You know, we appreciate it. And you know what? The folks who was here, they appreciated it. And so thank you for doing all that you do. Brother Larry, lead us in prayer, please. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house this morning, Lord. And God, we just pray your Holy Spirit will work in a mighty way in the hearts of God, God, that today might be the day of salvation. God, take up this offering and claim your special service. And God, for the building of your kingdom. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
There's a light in the window, the table said in splendor, someone standing by the open door. I can see the crystal river, I must be near forever, Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Hey, see the bright light shine, it's just about home time. I can see my father standing at the door. This world's been a wilderness, and I'm ready for deliverance. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. I can see my family gather, sweet faces all familiar, no one old and feeble anymore. This old lonesome heart is crying, thanks I'll spread my wings for flying, Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Hey, see the bright light shine, it's just about home time. I can see my father standing at the door. This world's been a wilderness and I'm ready for delivering. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. I've lost the words to this music, so hopefully my memory's okay. <clears throat>
was on his mind. The look of love was on his face. Thorns were on his head. Blood was on his scarlet robe. Stained crimson red though his eyes were on the crowd that day he looked up at in time for when he was on the cross I was on his mind I've been blessed more than I deserve, blessed by the God of heaven and earth, blessed abundantly, blessed more than I could ask or think, God is nothing but good and I confess, I've been blessed, I've seen the windows of heaven open wide I've seen God's love and kindness stretch from sky to sky I've seen him pour out mercy time after time I've seen the windows of heaven opened wide I've been blessed more than I deserve, blessed by the God of heaven and earth, blessed abundantly, blessed more than I could ask or think, God is nothing but good and I confess, I've been blessed, oh God's been faithful all along the way. And looking back at all he's done, I stand amazed. I've never faced a trial without his grace. God's been faithful all along the way. I've been blessed more than I deserve, blessed by the God of heaven and earth, blessed abundantly blessed more than I could ask or think God is nothing but good and I confess I've been blessed oh through the fire and through the flood he's never failed me no not once all I need comes from His hand And when I think of all He's done 
I'll testify again. I'm blessed more than I deserve. Blessed by the God of heaven and earth. Blessed abundantly. Blessed more than I could ask or think. God is good and that's what I confess. I've been blessed more than I deserve. Blessed by the God of heaven and earth. Blessed abundantly. Blessed more than I could ask or think. God is nothing but good and I confess. God is nothing but good and I confess. I've been blessed. Oh, I've been blessed. Yes, I've been blessed. Hey, we have been blessed. Amen? Amen. All right. Revival is just three weeks from today. And so we're going to kind of bring a revival type message to you this morning. Turn in your Bible to the book of Zechariah, Old Testament, Zechariah chapter 3. For those of you that have maybe just began studying your Bibles and not real sure where Zechariah is, Go to Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, New Testament. Go backwards. You'll have Malachi. Next book back is Zechariah, okay? Zechariah chapter 3. It's kind of an unusual chapter, uh, and really, in a sense, I think it's a great revival chapter that God may use to speak to our hearts here in the Lord's house This morning. Again, we're just glad you're with us today, and uh, we have come to seek the Lord. Uh, Is there one thing I could ask all of you to do today? Would be this obey the Lord. Obey the Lord before you leave today. Some of you may need salvation. Be a good day for you to accept Jesus as your Savior. Some of you, maybe you've got away from God. Wouldn't it be a good day to rededicate your life and leave here right with God, uh, with assurance and with victory? And with peace. I'll tell you, obey the Lord. You know what? Obey the Lord and you can't go wrong. And that is the truth. Well, you may be there by now. Zechariah chapter 3. Stand with me. We're just going to read the first three verses. This is all the page turning we're going to do. We'll probably just stay there in them three verses uh, this morning. And so here's what the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 3 beginning in verse 1. It said, And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Pray with me. Father, We do come to you again in the name of Jesus. We thank you the way you've blessed our worship already, the good congregationals, the good specials. But Lord, just now, really the most important part of any service, and that's when we get into the preaching of the Word of God. And Lord, we pray that there might be open hearts and open minds in this service this morning. Let folks be able just to get all the clutter out of their mind for just a little while. And just center and concentrate on the Word of God, Lord, and allow your Holy Spirit to do a work of grace in our hearts today. Lord, we confess we can't do anything without you. Forgive us of our sins. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us preach the message you laid on our heart today. And we're going to thank you for the victory already in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Kind of an unusual chapter in a sense. Uh, We get into this and there's a lot of great revival chapters in the Bible. There really is. Uh, And this is one that may be overlooked somewhat. Uh, But I tell you what, I think it's a great revival 
passage of scripture. In verse one, just follow with me. It says, and he showed me. That's the way it begins. And he showed me. And you know, there are times in our lives, God shows us something, doesn't he? You know, God, God speaks to us through divine appointments. I believe he can speak to us from the word of God. I believe he can speak to you through the preacher. I believe he can speak to every one of you through the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. And so God has a way to show us uh, some things this morning. You know, a lot of people trying to find, they want to know more, know more, know more. I'm not so sure you need to know more as much as you need to see more. Be able to see what God has put before you. And you know what, it's, when revival comes to a church or to a Christian, I think it's kind of like when God just removes the veil from heaven and helps us to see things the way they really are, when he can really show us something. Uh, this Thursday, I'll be going up to a uh, hospital. Or, uh, it's one of the medical clinics in, in Fenton. And it seems like very, very quickly, I've developed a cataract in my right eye. And you know what? I mean really fast in the last three months probably. And it's so cloudy now to look through. Everything is kind of a blur. Some of you think you can go to sleep on me today. I'm watching you with my left eye, all right? <laughs> but with my right eye, it, things sure look cloudy today. Uh, but you know what? When they get this fixed, uh, when, whenever, it'll kind of like the veil be removed and I can see good again. Well, we can have revival when, we, when, when God lifts the veil. It helps us to see him for who he is. And listen, helps you to see you for who you are. And then I believe God can do a work of grace in our, in our hearts. So when, when God lifts the veil, I think we see ourselves differently. I think you'll even see other people differently. Uh, looking, where are we looking? Why, we're looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith today. He is our victory, amen? And, and the book of Zeremiah, uh, Zechariah, it's an amazing book of the Old Testament, I believe one of the, the minor prophets, uh, and more than all the other minor prophets, it seems like he is pointing toward Jesus more than anything else. We've already said this many times in recent days. We've been preaching a lot from the Old Testament. I can find Jesus in every book of the Bible, can't you? I mean, from the beginning to the end, he's there. And, and, and Zechariah is absolutely pointing us to Jesus today. But in verse 1, it says, He showed me. Joshua, the high priest, the high priest of God, uh, and God is, and you know what, now this is not the Joshua of the book of Joshua, that was a long time back, uh, but here we find Joshua, he's one of the high priests, and you know what, God is going to deal with Israel through the high priest, so these things that he's saying to Joshua, he's re really, Joshua is representative of the household of Israel is God deals with their sins uh, to bring about revival in the land. God is dealing with the nation of Israel through Joshua. And you got to realize, what, what has Israel been through here lately? You know what? They've just come out of 70 years of captivity. They've been 70 years away from home, 70 years away from the temple, seven long, 70 long years they've now been living in Babylonian captivity. And you know what? And God has bringing them back to the land, but not just to the land. When As they come back, God's bringing them back to himself. It's not about the land as much as it's about the God of the land, right? Uh, this morning, it's not so much about the church or here at Gospel Light as much as it is about the Lord himself. But we, we look into the scripture and God's bringing them back uh, in, into that place. And real, you know what? Real revival, I think, is about God's people. Listen to me. Real revival is about God's people falling in love with Jesus all over again. So people say, I've been saved all, for many, many years. Long time. But you know what? That don't mean you love Jesus like you used to. And I think revival is sometimes when the church, when believers individually or even collectively fall in love with Jesus all over again. So here's Joshua, the high priest. He's representing a nation that you got to realize they've went so far from God. You might ask the question, why would God allow his people, Israel, to be taken 70 years into the bondage of one of the most idolatrous nations in all of the earth, Babylon? 
Why, did, why would God permit that? You know what? Because they, they got to the place they wanted life without God. And you know what God gave them? He gave them what they wanted. Sometimes God gives you what you want, and you won't be glad what you wanted. Uh, listen, so they, they wanted a life without God, in a sense, in their state of rebellion and all their sins. And so God let them go into captivity 70 years, no temple, no worship as they once had, uh, a land uh, without hearing much from God at all. God gave them what they wanted. And now they've come back into this place. You know what? I mean, get, getting a glimpse, I think, of Jesus will change everything in your life. Let me say that again. If you could just get a good glimpse of Jesus today, it'll change everything in your life. Some people say, boy, if we could just get a glimpse into heaven. And if we could get a glimpse into heaven this morning, I think we'd probably hear Charlene singing a song, wouldn't we? <laughs> hey, but if, if we could get a glimpse into heaven, it would change your life forever. Well, maybe. Somebody would say, you know what, if we could just get a glimpse into hell, man, would that change your life? Maybe. But if you could just get a glimpse of Jesus, that absolutely would change your life forever. Getting a glimpse of the Savior, the Son of God, the one who loved us and died on the cross for our sins that we might have eternal life. You know, we're approaching Easter here in just two weeks. Hey, two weeks from today, can you believe it? Easter. Wow, how'd that get here so quick, right? And here we are at Easter season. Uh, man, if there's ever a season you ought to get a glimpse of Jesus, it ought to be Easter time. I mean, we realize Christ hanging on the cross, dying for our sins, paying our sin debt in full that we might have salvation this morning. It was on that day he was hanging on the cross and at high noon, the brightest part of the day, 12 o'clock noon, God turned the lights out. And for three hours, there was darkness. Jesus cried out those words, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachani. You know what he said? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Then we hear him cry those words, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. When, when Jesus said, it is finished, your sin debt was paid on the cross. But God turned the lights out at noon. There's a time back in the Old Testament in the, in the time of uh, they was in captivity in Egypt. And you know what? God turned the lights out. Remember? They said there was a darkness that could be felt. It was so dark. And so God turned the lights out. Hey, guess what's going to happen on April the 8th? God's getting ready to turn the lights out again, okay? So, oh, it might just be another eclipse. There's been others in the past. There may be more, more, more to come. Uh, but there's something that seems to be so significant about this eclipse. And I'm, I'm not going to get into all that. And I've, I've heard a lot of the uh, prophecy teachers and preachers, they believe this, they believe that. I don't know, but it could very well be an eclipse to open up a lot of folks' mind. Judgment is coming. Hey, Jesus is coming. They say a lot of things could happen during this eclipse, and I'm here to, not here to preach on that. Only time will tell. But I know one thing. When God turns the lights out, folks ought to pay attention. Come on. <laughs> say, God's going to turn the lights out. He controls the sun, the moon, and all the stars, doesn't he? Yeah. So when God brings about an eclipse, understand God may be very well speaking. And understand this. Christ dying on the cross, we see his... By the way, I'll just throw this in. Is, is there anything uh, prophetic about this? I don't know, but the direct path of this eclipse is going over eight cities in America named Nineveh. Give you a little thought to think on there, okay? I understand this. But as we get into this, Christ dying on the cross, and that's, God is, what did God show us through him, Christ dying on the cross? Showed us how black-hearted us sinners really are because Jesus died for our sins. He died for our sins. Let's get in verse 2. Zechariah 3, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? You know, it's not 
I want you to get that thought. That's really what the message is about more than anything this morning. This brand plucked out of the fire. You know, I look at that verse and I think, who am I? Who am I today? Be a good question for you to ask yourself. Who am I? Well, you know what? I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. But let me tell you who I really am this morning. I am a brand that's been plucked out of the fire. And I'm going to reveal this to you from the scriptures here this morning. You know what I really deserve today? What I really deserve today is a place called hell. If we talk about deserving, and there's where the mercy of God stepped in. Amen. He didn't get, mercy really means he didn't give me what I deserved. Because of my sins, my rebellion, my unrighteousness, I deserved a place called hell. And I deserved the wrath of God. But because of Jesus going to the cross and paying my price for me, praise God, I've been pardoned. Hey, he set me free. Why, I'm nothing else but a brand plucked out of the fire. You know, what is, there's a few things I think God wants to show us. Remember I said, not necessarily we want to know more. Let God show us something today. And the first thing I think God wants to show us this morning, here is Joshua. He is, in verse 1, he is standing before the angel of the Lord. And so the first thing I want you to see, I believe it, it means how we approach a holy God. Read verse 1 again. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest. Where is he standing? Why, he's standing before the angel of the Lord. God wants us to see today what it means to approach a holy God. You know, God, you know what God wants today? God wants you to see him. God wants you to see him. Whether you've been a long-standing member of this church or this is the first time you've ever visited this church, God wants you to see him in this service. But there's a second thing God wants you to see. When you get to see God for who he really is, God wants you to see you and how you stand before him. God wants you to get a glimpse, a glimpse if you would, uh, see yourself for who you really are. Well, look at that verse 3. Joshua, there he was in the presence of the Lord, and he was, how did he see himself? He's clothed in filthy garments, and he stood before the angel. You know, most believe this angel in this scripture is none other than the pre-incarnate appearance of Christ himself. We see all through scripture many times he appears as Jesus, sometimes referred to as uh, this angel, if you will, uh, the angel of the Lord, Christ himself. And Joshua walks in into his presence. How's Joshua dressed? He's a high priest. You know what? What the how the high priest dress? Well, I'll tell you something. They dressed up. Man, they had these holy garments, these robes, these these long robes, pomegranates, bells on the bottom. They come in. He's got the mitre uh, hat on his head. He listen. He is dressed for a, the place to come into a holy God. They come in clean. They come in washed. The garments. But verse three looks different, doesn't it? Because verse 3 says, when he came in before the presence of the Lord, he was clothed with filthy garments as he stood before the angel. I mean, listen, he might have felt like he was dressed pretty good until he got into the presence of the Lord. And then he felt dirty. See God for who he is. He is holy. Amen. And when you get into the holiness of God, you can't help but see the sinfulness of man. You can't help but see us for who we really are this morning. Isn't that what, uh, isn't that what happened to Isaiah? He come into the presence of the Lord and he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. In the midst of a people of unclean lips, mine eyes have seen the king. How about John the Revelator over in the book of Revelation? What happened when he saw Jesus? He fell on his face like a dead man in the presence of his holiness. He saw the holiness of God. He realized his sinfulness. You know what? And we get into this here this morning. The question is this. What does Joshua say? 
I think we've mentioned this a few times in recent messages. I think the, the more you can get into the presence of God, the more of your sins you realize you have. Then we need, we need repentance. Amen? Listen, see God for who he is, and then you can see yourself for who you are. Now here's Joshua. He's in the presence of the Lord. He realizes he's a, a like, kind of like filthy rags, like Isaiah said. A righteousness is like filthy rags in the eyes of a holy God. And there he stands. Let me ask you a question. What, so what, what does Joshua say? What can he say? There he is in the presence of the Lord. He feels dirty. And what does Joshua say to the Lord? If you search out that whole chapter, here's what he said. Absolutely nothing. He was speechless. What could he say? Joshua said absolutely nothing. He does not speak at all. And it reminds us, you know, it does not matter what we have to say. What matters is what God has to say to us. And in this chapter, God is dealing with the whole nation of Israel. But I'll tell you what, you know how he's going to get to the whole nation? He's going to get to the whole nation through one. Joshua, the high priest. Can I tell you, I believe that's how revival starts. Sometimes through one. That's the absolute truth. I mean, we, we get, a, get a picture of this and we find out it, it, it starts with one man or one woman through one. You know, we're talking about a church having revival. How can God bring a great awakening into his church? And it'll, it'll start with, if we have revival, it'll start with one man probably, or it could be several. But some of the great revivals of the past, they all began with one person with a real burden for souls and a burden for revival and a burden for repentance and a real burden to get right with God. Oh, listen, we, we, can, we can see this all, all throughout Scripture and, and these, these revivals. It may start with just one man. I've got to ask you, are you the one? Hey, are you the one today? The very one that would be willing to get into the presence of God and see who God is and then get a real glimpse of who you really are and get determined to get right with God. Get to, so the first thing God wants to show us what it means to approach a holy God. Now the second thing God wants us to see, look at this verse 2. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? You know, there's two things in that verse. The Lord and Satan. Said, man, what are they doing in the same verse? I bet they always go together. Because everywhere God is working, the devil's working. Everywhere God's busy doing something right and holy, the devil's always present trying to mess it up and wreck it. And we've been blessed as a church here at Gospel Light. Oh, we've had the blessing of God upon us for many years. Uh, but I tell you what, the unseen things that we've never seen, guarantee you the devil's been fighting us all the way. Amen. When God does something great, the devil goes to work too. And in this verse too, we see that. We see that. Here's Joshua standing in the presence of the Lord and the devil shows up. That's so what happened in verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. You know what we see in this ver verse, uh, just as Jesus is working in our lives, the enemy wants to stop us quickly. That's the truth. So the second thing God wants us to see, not only what we look like in the presence of God, he, I believe he wants us to see the enemy for who he is. I see God for who he is. Hey, God's holy. I see me for who I am. I'm a sinner needing, by needing his grace and mercy. And praise God for salvation. But I need to see who the enemy is also. The adversary. The devil himself. Why he's the enemy. Because he is the accuser of the brethren. He's the accuser of the brethren. 
I mean, there's, there's more and more going on in this world that we don't see with our eyes. There is a spiritual battle that is raging this morning. And understand this, it's being waged and we're right in the middle of it. There's the Lord, there's the devil. You know, I've, I've seen years and years ago, uh, cartoons, back when cartoons was good and funny and clean, along when I was, I'd see a cartoon and I don't remember what, what uh, cartoon character it was, but there was a devil over on one shoulder. Remember, remember one of some of them old cartoons? Hey, it's kind of like that, really, because the Lord's over here and the devil's over here and you're just stuck in the middle. And the Lord's tugging at you to do what's right and the devil's over here trying to talk you out of it. That happens in every service I preach. That happens in every invitation I give. The Lord, the Lord probably, if, if you're here and you're lost, I won't say probably, the Lord will try to talk you into getting saved before you leave this place. But warning, the devil's going to try to talk you out of it. <laughs> it's that, that's that spiritual battle that's raging in the unseen world. And, and, and we find that here in, in, in verse 2. Satan, you know, where is, where is the devil here? Look at verse 2 again. The Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now, if you go back uh, to verse 1, where is Satan standing? He's standing on the right hand. Verse 1 says the devil is standing on the right hand. Who stands on the right hand in a court case? The prosecutor. And there stands the devil, our great enemy, our adversary, the accuser of the brethren. And listen, he's, he's always stirring it up. He's always trying to destroy the work of God. And you know what? In a, when, the de when you think about the devil trying to destroy you and me and the church, it's not because we're so important, because we're not. But it's because we're important to God. And the devil wants to destroy that. The devil wants to defeat that. And so we see uh, the great adversary, the, the persecutor of the brethren, and he's there to accuse us. He's there to find fault with us and bring us before the Lord. But the third thing God wants you to see is this. Good news, there is an advocate because the Lord was there too. Hey, listen, the Lord is there. Verse 2, the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee. Now, he didn't say Joshua, rebuke him. He said the Lord rebuke him. Can I tell you this this morning? <clears throat> I want you to see the Lord is always there for you to fight your fight, to be your advocate, to stand in your place and, and, and declare innocence if you've trusted Christ as your Savior today. But let the Lord do the talking for you. Because you'll never win an argument with the devil. He's smarter than most of us. In fact, he's smarter than all of us. Don't forget he was an angelic being for he got kicked out of heaven for his rebellion. He knows the Bible better than any of us does. The devil knows the Bible better than your, your pastor. But don't you ever try to have an argument with the devil. <laughs> Let the Lord do your fighting for you. Amen. And that's all. Did Joshua say anything? No, he said nothing. So the Lord is the one that spoke to Satan. The Lord is the one that stood as his advocate. And in this, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. That's exactly the way it says. The devil of the accuser of the brethren. You know what? I, and I think he's still the accuser of the brethren, don't you? The devil goes before the Lord. And says, hey, that Larry Allison preacher down there, man, there's some things in his life ain't right. Do you know what a rascal he used to be? Did this, did that. The old devil can start naming off things. Then he can start picking out some of the sins that maybe we should have got rid of and we didn't. And the devil goes before the Lord and says, you know what? He deserves judgment. He deserves hell and I got to Hot spot waiting on him. And the Lord stands up and says, Devil, thing is this, he's mine. 
Hey, he's saved. He's now under the blood of Jesus Christ. He sure ain't perfect, but he's saved. And devil, you can't have him. I, see, I don't have to fight that argument. Jesus is going to fight for me. He's my advocate. So there's the devil, the accuser of the brethren. And he accuses every one of you every chance he gets. <coughs> the devil. Joshua can say nothing. I can say nothing. The devil can say it's all true and that Jesus stands as our defense attorney. You know what Jesus could say? Let me tell you who Brother Larry Allison really is. He's a brand plucked out of the fire. He's a brand that's been plucked out of the fire. Isn't that what Jesus told the devil in verse 2 about Joshua? Hey, he said he is a brand plucked out of the fire. Now, the great thing about this is simply this. It's all about Jesus. It is. It's all about Jesus. Revival about a church getting a special vision, a glimpse of Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus all over again. Seeing yourselves for who you really are in the presence of a holy God. And we need Jesus. Amen? We need the Lord. Some of you already been asking probably to yourself, what's this brand? A brand plucked out of a fire? What's that mean anyway? What is a brand? A brand is a little smoldering, smoking piece of wood. You know what? It's a little wood scrap. It's still smoking and it's smoldering. Why, it's not good for much anything anymore. You can either stamp it out or you can throw some water on it, and put it out, get rid of it. It's not, worth, not going to do any heating. It's not worth much anything anymore. But Jesus in his grace and mercy comes along and plucks us out of the fire. You see, as sinners, we're not much of anything. Right? Uh, if you stop and really get a good glimpse of who you are today in the eyes of a holy God, some of you aren't as good as you think you are. Because we're all sinners in need of a Savior. We're all sinners that need His grace and His mercy to forgive us and sustain us. And I've, I've been saying this, and the closer you get to God, the more... I believe you see your own sins. When, when, you know, when folks get close to God, they don't get proud, they get humble. Right? I mean, if, if you're a very proud person, you, you know, you didn't get very close to God because in God's presence, you'll have humility. Jesus knows uh, how bad a sinner we really are. Hudson Taylor, one of the great missionaries, he wrote his wife back from the mission field, and here's what he said. He said, you know what? I never knew how bad my heart was until I got on the mission field. And it was there he really, really got close to God, and it was there he really, really saw his own sins and the need of repentance. Let me close with a story that's absolutely a true story. In Eng there was an English village, and it was just a little before midnight. There was a preacher and his family in their house. He had eight to ten kids. Had the old thatched roof, English house. It caught fire just a little before midnight. Oh, there's, they're, they're waking up one by one, and the dad's trying to, he's an old-time preacher. He's trying to get everybody out of the house. They finally get everybody out of the house, and they start counting heads. There's one kid missing. His name's John. Little John. True story. And they can hear him screaming. And you know what? The rooftop is completely engulfed in fire. They go to the stairs. He's on the second floor. The stairs are totally in flames. There's no way. It looks like little John's going to burn to death. And they're all in a panic outside. And finally somebody saw in a window... And it was John hollering at the, out that window. Two guys got together. They got on their shoulders. And they said, John, jump. Jump. And he jumped and they caught him. They saved him from that fire. They saved him from the flames. 
No, nobody would have ever realized who that John would become. It was John Wesley. John Wesley, the father of Methodism, if you will. Back then, the old-time Methodists, man, they were some revival preaching. And they preached Jesus, and John Wesley won thousands to Christ. Praise God. You know what? He was a brand plucked out of a fire. They said, just to tell the rest of the story, they said when John was 50 years old, he got so sick, he thought he was going to die. Now, he lived another 30 years. He died an older man. But he was so sick, he thought he was dying, and he, he made the epitaph to be put on his own gravestone in the, in the graveyard. And here's what it said. Here lies John Wesley, a brand plucked out of the fire. They said in his office he found a painting of a house on fire. And underneath that in his own handwriting, it was in his office for years, he wrote those words, a brand plucked out of a fire. Listen to me. If you're saved today, if you know Jesus, if you know Christ, we're all just a brand plucked out of a fire. Oh, it's not just the fires of hell, although that's very real. I think it was even the fires of our own sins. And the Lord has rescued us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Man, I'll tell you what. That's the victory we have today. Who was this John Wesley? Was he a great preacher? Well, that's not, not what we're looking at. Was he the father of Methodism and one thousands to Christ? Yes, but that's not what we're looking at. If you asked John Wesley who he was, he would have told you he was a brand plucked out of the fire. God bless you. If you need Jesus today, the Lord's ready to get you out of the fire. He's ready to forgive your sins, sustain you. What do I got to do to be saved, preacher? You know, we, we preached Sister Charlene's funeral yesterday. And I'm just, I'm just guessing. I, nobody could take a head count. There would be 150 people crammed in that place. I mean, they brought chairs in until there was nowhere else to sit. Out the foyer where you walk through the door, the aisles, the halls, full of people. And when I got done preaching, I said, I know how Charlene wants me to close this out. And I had people bow their heads and close their eyes, and I led them in a prayer of salvation. It was hard to see with that many people, but I said, if you prayed that prayer and you really meant it, raise your hand. At least five to six people got saved yesterday. You know, they said there's rejoicing in heaven. If she knew what was going on, I know she was rejoicing. <laughs> oh, listen, praise the Lord. A brand plucked out of the fire. You may be here today and you've never been saved. You don't know Christ. If you die today, you don't have assurance of heaven. Listen to me. You need to pray, pray a prayer of salvation yourself. Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Hey, He's the Savior. He died for me. He was buried. He rose again. Jesus, come into my heart and save me today. And just that quickly, in that moment of time, Jesus will pluck you out of the fire. Let's stand. You need the Lord today. Someone will meet you at the altar. Someone will pray with you. You don't have to come by yourself. Be a good day for you to get saved be a good day for you to get right with God. A brand plucked out of the fire. Father, we thank you for blessing us today as only you can. Thank you for the message you gave us and I pray that Lord there has been open hearts and open minds and I pray today folks have not only seen God but they've seen themselves and their need of the Lord. Lord, save the lost, reclaim the backslider, it always starts with just one. And maybe even for revival, there might be just one that would want to step up and say, God, here I am. Use me. Start with me. I'll be the one. Lord, meet the needs of this service. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You need prayer? You come on. Somebody will meet you at the altar and pray with you.
It'd be a good day to come to Jesus. Get your heart right with God. He's just a prayer way. With just the music playing for a minute, let me say this. We're going to sing one last verse and we're going to close. Remember what I said earlier? You know what you ought to do today? It's a good thing to come to church, but even better if you obey the Lord. And we got the Lord saying, be a good day for you to get saved. And you got the invisible devil right now on your other shoulder saying, not today. Be a better time. Be a better day. Oh, listen. Don't let the devil beat you out of this. You need victory in Jesus. He's here to save you. If you got away from God, he's here to reclaim you. You ought to come. While we sing this verse, we're going to close. I said amen. amen. Let's sing our song. <clears throat> tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives and they all said praise the Lord